Hi everyone, um, today I'm going to show you how to make this lovely little clay pot and uh, a knotted hanger. Uh, very very simple to make and uh, you can use them for uh, putting a small plant pot in uh, with, a, with a flower plant or you could, if you varnished it, you could use it as a, a bird feeder out in the garden. So. Um, First of all, I'm going to run through the things that you need for the project. Um, I've used a, a tin foil pudding bowl as a starting point. Uh, just for anybody who finds it difficult to shape a pot, using something like this is really handy if you've already got a ready-made shape to work around. Then I've got the, uh, the, the air drying clay, a couple of uh, little tools and scissors and stuff. Uh, for helping you for the making, some water, uh, acrylic paints for painting afterwards and then these here are strips, long strips of a kind of a jersey fabric. Uh, you could use anything, you could old, old leggings even cut up into strips would work. Um, about a metre and a half long you need three strips for making your hanger. Okay so we'll start off uh, just doing the clay work to begin with. I'm going to be using a, a, a terracotta clay on this one, but the, um, the the white clay works just as well, or the grey clay works just as well. It's not that one is better than another, uh, it's just what I have handy, that's all. So I'm going to take out a good bit of the clay. It probably won't take a whole, a whole packet. I'm hoping it won't take a whole packet because I'd like to do something with the leftovers afterwards. So to cover the, the tin foil bowl, take your clay and break up a piece about that size into the palm of your hands and roll it into a ball. I think I've showed you how to do this before. Press it out with your finger and thumb like this. It's gonna, it doesn't have to be done perfectly, you know, it's just uh, make it easy for yourself. And press it onto the side of the pudding bowl like this. Okay. It will kind of fall over if you do that because the minute you put the clay on it will start getting heavier on one side. And work your way around. As you can see I'm just slightly covering over from one piece to the next and using my thumb to merge the two together and then folding the clay over the top of the rim. You may find it kind of comes up a bit, but that's okay. As you work around it, it will all stick together. Um, you need this to be about, maybe about four millimetres, I don't know, something like that, in thickness. You don't want it to be so thin that it all starts breaking apart, but you don't necessarily want to use more clay than is necessary either, because the thicker you make it, the more clay you're going to need. Having this, these kind of wrinkles in the pudding basin is actually quite helpful because it helps the, the clay to adhere to the pudding bowl whereas if it were totally smooth it would uh, yeah it would just be a little bit more difficult just gives it something to grip onto
little bit left there just to cover that part okay you'll see now I've covered the the whole of the rim like that I'm just going to finish off the rest of it now careful when you're doing this part not to push the tinfoil basin too much you don't want it to lose its shape um, even though if it comes a little bit out of shape it won't matter but at the same time try and keep it so that it's still got a good shape for you to work around that means being a little bit careful with it See what I'm doing when I'm putting my hand inside the basin and then pressing down so my hand is making something a little bit firmer inside, gives you something to uh, press against. You can use the back of your nail. That's always quite helpful for blending clay together. And you can see that I'm not doing this, not making this really, really perfect. In fact, these kinds of projects, I think they almost look better when they're not really, really perfect. But it's totally up to you. Because this is a kind of a rustic thing, we don't have to think of it being a, a completely perfect finished look to it. Just as long as you can cover the whole of the basin and make sure that all the clay... It's blended together, it's not going to crack when it dries, it'll look good. Okay. So, as you can see, I've got the basic uh, bowl finished. A little bit there to finish off the rim. I want the rim to try and be, you know, have a kind of a finished look to it. So uh, make that be something that you spend a bit of time working on just so that you, you get the look of a finished piece. Okay, it's getting there. You can use a small bit of water, not too much water. This is a, um, it's not a kind of a clay from the earth, so it's it's actually got a sort of an oil in it. But just use a little bit of water just to help you blend. So I'm just finishing off, uh, checking that there's no cracks. And if there are any, a little bit of water blending over the top but that's looking pretty smooth now you can see there's a lot of kind of finger shapes in this but i like that it's got a hand built feel about it now i'm going to do some work on 
creating some kind of uh, decoration. Now you can see on this one, all I did was a simple little circle with a small <laughs> little uh, gold spot in the middle. But I'll show you how I'm going to make some leaf shapes for this one. Just something different, okay? So to make a leaf shape, take a little bit of the clay, roll it in your, your hands, like I did before, maybe a small bit, press it down and then just elongate it at either end, okay? Now you're going to need a couple of them, a few of them. They don't have to be the same size. If you decide to do something that's got a natural feel, like leaf shapes, or even something like the little circles up there, they don't have to be exactly the same size, because leaves wouldn't be in nature. So, there's less pressure when you do something like that, a more natural shape, than there would be if you were doing something that was more of a... A ge geometric design. Just pointing the ends. So I've got a few there. Now gently pick up your pot. It will be quite heavy because the clay is not dry yet. And I'm going to put a few markings in it uh, using this little tool. You could use a cocktail stick. You could even use the end of a fine brush or a pointed pencil. That would work too. But a little tool like that's very handy. Um, the reason I'm going to do that is just I think it looks nice if you go with the kind of the rustic look and it gets you around the fact that uh, it's not even, the surface is not even, which helps to mask any little imperfections and it, your eyes aren't drawn to the imp imperfections so much. So as you can see I'm just doing small lines coming down, some are longer, some are shorter, right down to the base. You can see I'm just holding the clay pot in my hand like that. I'm not squeezing it um, with my thumb because you don't want to get rid of the, the details, the textures that you've already put into it. So be careful when you come back up to the beginning again. Now, oh, that looks about even. And next thing I'm going to do is to apply the little leaf shapes. I'm just using a small bit of water on the back and then laying the leaf down on top and gently pressing it into the surface of the clay. Okay. Once again. Now I'm going to do these slightly at angles. And on that one I did it sort of very evenly. This one I'm going to uh, put them at slightly different angles because I want to make it look like there are leaves flowing around it.
you need a little bit of water when you're attaching the two pieces of clay um, just to help the, the two pieces uh, blend together. Obviously all you have is the pressure of your fingers and you can see how I'm going backwards and forwards with the, the leaf shapes. perfect number of leaves made. Okay. So if you see any little cracks like that appearing, they can do if you view, you know, kind of model the clay for a while with your hand it starts to dry it out. Now I'm going to use this tool, as, you, as I said before you could use like a cocktail stick and I'm going to put some little markings into the leaf shape. So a wiggly line and just a couple of little marks for the strands of the, the veins of the leaf. So about two on either side. One or could do two on one side and three on the other. Just mix it up a little bit, or two on one side, and two on the other. There's no rule. One one on that side. There. So we're back at the beginning again. And I think I'm going to do a little bit of a mark here to suggest the shape of the stem of the plant. You can see I'm not drawing the whole thing in, I'm only just making a little suggestion of connection between the two. There. I think that looks nice. You see any small little bits which seem to be cracking a little bit. Maybe just go over the top with your fingers. Okay back with you now just to uh, show you how to paint the the bowl that we made in the earlier part of the video. This is the one I painted earlier. Um, obviously kind of like orange is going to deep red with the green and gold which I think is a nice combination. It's very earthy. And uh, I'm going to go for a different colour scheme on this one. When you're painting um, something like the terracotta clay, you will find that the colour of the clay shows through the paints a little bit. Um, so earthy colours are quite good for these kinds of br brown terracotta clays. Whereas the paler clays, you can go with almost any colour. Uh, even so, I think that um, uh, the way of painting is quite important. Is when you're using acrylic paints because it's so thick you want to allow the acrylic paint to sink into the surface of the clay so rather than using the acrylic paint directly from the tube mix it with some water first so you've got a nice runny version of it to work with and that makes it much easier as well when it comes to blending your colours together lots and lots of water. You can always do a second coat if you want but I find that allowing the paint to, to um, sink into the clay gives a nicer effect than painting onto the surface and making it look much more plasticky. And we use a little bit of purple at the bottom just to give some depth. And as you can see some of these colours are 
um, dry underneath so don't be alarmed that I'm kind of painting over the top of that turquoise there I'm just uh, using an old palette that's all okay. so I'm going to start with the lighter green the top Make sure that you get the paintbrush um, into the crevices, especially with a textured clay like we've we've created. It's nice to make sure that the paint is actually seeping into the crevices. You can see that the brown is kind of showing through the green, but um, I think that will look fine at the end of it. Move on to the, the darker green. You can see I'm just kind of working over the top of that lighter green so that you don't really see a line between the two colours. always go back and add a second coat afterwards if you want to deepen the colours or strengthen the colours but I think it's better to start with the, the washy um, the washy look and build up the colours gradually rather than go for very thick paint straight away and so you might need, want a second coat on the purple here all acrylic paints are different so you know they work slightly differently your set might be quite different to the ones that I have okay we're back with this more yellowy green Then drag some of the colours down.
Okay. I'm going to allow this to dry now so that we can then finish up any other little bits that need touching up and put on the leaves. Thank you. So I'm just going to finish off painting now. I've just got the leaves to do. And I'm going to go with um, yellow for the tip of the leaf. I'm using a small brush here, you can see. Going into orange. Try and use your small brush to go right around the leaf so that you don't end up with anything. I have the terracotta showing. And then I'm going to go to deep red for the start of the leaf and blend it together. And I'm just going to bring the deep red into the carvings of the leaf. It's a nice contrast to the um, to the green background, but at the same time it still has a kind of nice earthy feel about it.
think that looks nice. So the last little thing I'm going to do, I'm going to blow dry that and I'm going to put a little bit of detail on with the gold. So for finishing off I'm going to use a little bit of this darker green just to put a little bit of shadow into it and just to take that, that line that I put in I need a nice fine brush for this. Just shading a little bit of this darker green underneath the leaf. Help the, the the leaf to stand out a little bit more. And the final thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of these gold outliners to put a few little details. So first of all I'm just going to highlight the, the tips of the leaves, give them a little bit more definition. You see how I'm just dragging the the outliner pen, lifting it away so that you get a nice fine line. I'm not doing it all over the leaf, I'm just giving it a small highlight just on the tip, help the leaves kind of pop out a little bit. And then I'm also going to do a detail around the top. So once again, I'm just doing a spot and then bring it down. Just a little edge. The sort of the shape of it mimics the lines that we created in the clay, the surface of the clay. So there's a way in which the detail is kind of echoing the texture of the pot. Some lines shorter, some lines longer. might just do a little bit of a highlight here so you've got the dark don't cover the dark you don't want to hide that so just a small line above the dark which kind of exaggerates the look of the dark line that we did I think that's nice. I think that's enough. It's important not to overdo it. Mm. 
So I'll leave that to dry now and I'll show you how to make the hanging. So I'm just, just going to finish off now and make the um, string hanging uh, basket to hold your clay pot. And the way that we do this is you need three strands of fabric or thick twine or thick wool, whatever you've got your hands on. This is made out of jersey fabric cut with uh, a pinking shears. Very strong and we've got a nice little bit of give in it. You could use an old pair of leggings for it. Um, or, yes, as I said, twine would be great, but I don't have any. So uh, these uh, strands are six foot long each. There's three of them. I'm going to start off by just putting a pin at the top end to pin them all together so I know they're all the same at the same place. And then I'm going to fold it over. Hope you can see that okay. Grab the top up there. So you can see there's a loop. And then put a knot at the top. So you've got a loop for hanging. Okay. Now you bring the strands down and you have six of them, but we're going to divide them into twos. So you'll have three strands, three sections with two strands each. First thing to do then is to measure down. I'm going to do mine at one foot and four inches. Hold it between your thumb and forefinger and just pin the two together so you know you've got them in the right spot. One foot, four inches. One foot and four inches. Now, carefully remove the pin and hold it with your thumb and forefinger to mark the spot. And take the two strands together. Might even be good to put a little marker. You could put like a little um, mark with a um, like a sharpie or something, and tie a knot on that spot. Take the next one. Once again, hold it with thumb and forefinger. Pull it through, tie a knot. You can see they're pretty much in the same space, place, which is good. And hold the thumb and forefinger. You can even use, if there's a little bit of colour somewhere on the fabric, use that as your marker. Just. Hold that in your mind's eye and tie the knot onto that spot. Okay. So now we have three strands. But I'm going to divide it back into six strands. I'm just going to open these up like this. And I'm going to make the basket. So I'll measure this at five inches. Oh, sorry, forgot to say. What you're doing now is you're not you're you're not tying the next knot with these two together. You're tying the next knot with one from each section together. So I'll just do that so you can see that. So we're getting this kind of zigzag shape. I want to measure down five inches. And then these two together again. Five inches. And then the last one are these two. Thank you. 
just as we did before take one between your thumb and forefinger mark the spot in your mind's eye or with a, a pen and tie the knot they're all pretty much in the same place which is great and then the last thing I'm going to do is to measure another five or six inches I'm going to tie them all together at the bottom so you have a little bit of a tassel This would be much easier to do, I'm sure, with twine. But hey. Yeah. Now, the next thing we do is to open up the basket shape. Take a clay bowl. Place the tassely bit at the bottom. And let the sections fall three ways. A little bit twisted. This is very tricky <laughs> to show on a video, but I think you can see what I'm doing here. So here's the finished um, hanging basket, hanging bowl. Um, I think it looks pretty good um, and it's fairly steady. You can see that on this one I did an extra knot which gave it more support, but I didn't have enough room on this um, these strands, so I didn't do that. But um, if you had a bigger bowl, you you could and longer strands of, of thread, you could uh, make more of a basket by dividing again and again and knotting each time, and then knotting back in the middle right at the very end. Um, so I think it looks great, and uh, they look lovely with a little spider plant in. Or you could even use it as a bird feeder outside, but if you did put it outside, uh, don't forget to varnish it with a nice strong outdoor varnish. Okay, enjoy! <laughs>